Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Grace and peace to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Antioch Church of the Brethren. Whether here in person or watching this later on. This is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And so is our theme for today. Note that for we who believe every day is a day of thanksgiving, we are called to live a life of gratitude, and out of gratitude for what God has given, we in turn give to others. And we discover the true riches that God has given in love and grace and life. In Psalm 100, gratitude motivates the act of worship. We come to worship because, the psalm says, the Lord is good. God is not evil. He is good. She desires only the best for all of us. And what's more, his love endures forever. God isn't on our side one moment and against us the next. God is eternally faithful. Always loving for each and every one through all generations. That's our kids, our kids' kids, and their kids' kids. And so on. For this great, greatest blessing, the faithful forever love of our God, we are called to give thanks and then to live like we believe it. And the beginning of that psalm starts with a command shout for joy. When's the last time you did that? Today we can give thanks that we are able to worship in whatever form that takes. We can give thanks for the, the care that has gone into providing a way for folks to worship inside and to worship at home. Technology has helped us in this respect. We can give thanks for those who are looking out on behalf of others to serve, to heal. I do want to remind folks to keep your masks on, uh, try to stay distant from one another so that we can expand the blessings of thankfulness and not put anyone in danger. Next week is Advent already, and the message next week will come from our brother Bruce Huffman, and he will be kicking off our Advent series on bearing the life of God. That will lead us to Christmas. The worship team is putting together home Advent kits so that folks can celebrate with lighting the Advent candles each Sunday, even if you're at home. And there will be more information coming about this in the newsletter tomorrow, as well as via call them all. Let the church office know if you're not getting any of those uh, announcements, and we can add you to our list. But be sure to read those weekly newsletters as they will have information on ways to better connect and uh, be involved with your church family. Are there other announcements to share? I know Ewan has one, and Laird has one. You can fight over who wants to come up first. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Okay. First, I'd like to thank everybody for their responses to Love Feast and all that. That means a lot to me. There was a lot of kind words said afterwards, and I'd like to thank Andy for allowing me to help. Second, as you can see, I'm wearing my scout uniform, 
After about a year of working on it, with some unplanned occurrences, I'm starting my Eagle project. What we'll be doing is building two picnic benches for Ram House and staining four of them. There's a few of them there that are in disrepair and just need getting rid of. Jim and I have already cut some wood. All we need to do is put them together, but the problem is we need to buy screws and things. So, at the very back, Pastor Andy has been very nice to let me set up a donation tin. Fundraising is really hard right now. You can't really bake things because, you know, people are like, Ugh, no thank you. But if you guys can help in any way, that'd be very nice. Thank you. I would like to thank everybody who participated in council meeting last uh, week, whether you were here or whether you were uh, listening in by phone or other means, and uh, thank all those who made that possible with the technology, particularly Randy and others. Um, no good deed goes unpunished. Some people have heard that before. So since we had council last week and what we did requires us to have an additional council. Uh, I will announce uh, in a few weeks uh, we will have an additional called council. Our slate that we approved, approved Beth Middleton as moderator. Beth is also on the gifts discernment team, uh, committee. She cannot serve two positions on the Gifts Discernment Committee, so uh, we will need to uh, put forward another name for that committee, and uh, as we work on that uh, here in a few weeks, I will give you notice to another called council to approve somebody for that position to fill Beth's position on the Gifts Discernment Committee. But thank you all who participated. Last week, I handed a note to Andy that he put in the church newsletter. Sarah has cervical cancer, and she's going to start five weeks of treatment tomorrow. So we need prayers, and there will be more in the newsletter tomorrow. Thank you. Other announcements, joys, or concerns? We also want to remember Linda Barnhart, who started chemo again this past week. Our opening prayer today is the same psalm that we opened with but from the message. Would you join me in prayer? On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this, God is God and God, God. He made us. We didn't make him. We are his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking praise. Thank him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and ever. Lord, we come into your presence this Sunday before Thanksgiving to thank you and to prepare ourselves to be filled with gratitude. For we confess we are not always grateful. Remind us that gratefulness is our greatest weapon against the darkness of hopelessness. Lord, receive our worship today. 
be with those whose names we've mentioned and the many who we have not. Send us out to spread that grateful, that grateful spirit so that others might be grateful too. In the name of Christ Jesus, who in thanks offered himself, we give you praise. Amen. Rise if you are able for our call to worship, our opening hymn, and our invocation prayer. Thankfulness is the heart of a worshiper. When we come to worship, we cannot help but thank God for who he is and what he has done. When we come to worship, our agenda is to meet God. God's agenda is to meet us. We raise our voices to get his attention. As we walk down the path to worship God, we simply cannot be quiet. We are not raising our voice to draw attention to ourselves. We shout for joy because the Lord is with us. As we enter God's presence, we enter his gates with thanksgiving. Here we thank God for what he has done. Once through the gates, we enter the courts with praise. Here we extol God for who he is. Moving closer to the presence of God, we come before God with thanksgiving and praise on our lips and in our hearts. The presence of God is revealed in this place as we worship today. Our opening hymn, number 94, Come Ye Thankful People.
Let us pray. Lord, we come before you with joyful praises. Help us to always serve you with gladness. We come before you with singing and worship. We know and acknowledge you as Lord. You are God. It is you who made us, not we ourselves. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. Thank you for making us your sheep. You are a loving shepherd, and we trust you. We will enter your presence with thanksgiving and praise. We come before you with a thankful heart and bless your name. For you are good, your mercy is everlasting, and your truth endures to all generations. Amen. You may be seated. As we worship here today, uh, some of you may have seen this post on Facebook, but consider it, it's called the best quote for 2020. This is not the year to get everything you want. This is to the year to appreciate everything you have. You may give your gift of an offering here today or through the church's giving app. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, we are blessed for many diverse ways we can worship you. We can worship you through singing spiritual songs and hymns together. We can worship you through our prayers and praise. We can worship you as we do work of our hands with our hearts as unto you. We worship you when we are your hands and feet to others in need. And we worship you through our giving of our tithes and offering with gladness and adoration. And we can also worship you through the prayer that your son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Sometimes I have trouble being thankful. Sometimes I just don't feel thankful. Sometimes I'd rather ask for more with an attitude. Sometimes I think, wow, is that it? Instead of, wow, look at that. Sometimes I feel the need to just say thanks, even if I don't feel it, and trust that if I think it enough, just thanks, and if I say it enough, just thanks, then eventually maybe I will also feel just thanks. There's a lot of talk lately about the word entitlement. If we are entitled to something, we deserve it, we are owed it. And some like to point out that in life we are entitled to nothing. We aren't owed anything. And when it comes to God, God is under no obligation to give us anything. God is absolutely free to do as she wants. The thing is, though, before we were created, God decided to give us a lot. Whether we deserve it all or not, just because God feels like it, God loves us. And when you love someone, you give to them even at cost to yourself. Remembering this helps me to be thankful. I don't deserve any of the things I have. I don't deserve the air that I breathe. God doesn't owe me a fun functional mind, a healthy body, loving relationships, a spirit to guide me, and daily offerings of grace and wonder and adventure, if I care to receive them as such. But he does. For some reason, I feel guilty when I give thanks. I feel guilty because I know that others don't have all that I have. And I know that my feeling thankful doesn't make their situation any better. I learned from a church support company back before COVID struck some sobering stats. I learned that 40% of Americans do not have enough cash to cover a $400 emergency. I learned that not only are millennials dealing with tremendous debt, which we hear about all the time, but the next oldest generation, Gen Xers, have an average, an average of $40,000 in debt. 
I learned that 33% of Americans, that's a third, have zero saved for retirement. And 23% have saved between one and about $10,000. Now there's nothing like financial statistics to drive that thankful feeling right out of your head. After all, money can get you pretty far in the world, right? It opens doors, provides security, frees you from anxiety. Or at least that's what we think it will do when we're trying to accumulate it. But you know what is a rare thing in Scripture? People giving thanks to God for money. It happens. But usually, in the New Testament especially, it's in the context of being thankful for another's generosity. Thanking God for their act of love. Not necessarily for the money itself. In Ephesians, Paul gives thanks, he says, nonstop, for the faithfulness and the loving kindness of the church family. He's overwhelmed with joy for them, even when some might say they haven't given him anything. At least nothing practical, nothing physical, just prayers of support. He's thankful that other people are following Jesus. Now, part of me can understand that. I know, I know some faithful and loving people. People who remind me of Jesus at times. And indeed, some of my most profound moments of true, true heartfelt thankfulness have been in witnessing good people doing good things. Christians doing Christ's work. I am thankful to God because it offers me a glimpse of hope. To know that God really is making a difference in this world. That people really are acting and serving according to God's will. Sometimes the world doesn't seem all that hopeful. In the midst of anger and anxiety, it's hard to be thankful. Thankfulness feels like a luxury, right? Once I get everything figured out in my day, maybe I can reserve some moments where I can go, okay, thank you, God, I got through that. But the power of gratitude is that on those darkest days, remembering to feel joy at what God has given is actually an act of resistance. It is a weapon to resist the darkness that portrays everything as hopeless. You know what I'm talking about? Rebel against the despair that rises up by reminding yourself that the Lord is good and his love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And the kingdom is coming. Bit by bit. And the power behind that kingdom is the same power that resurrected Jesus from the grave and that lives in us and in everyone who loves. It's the power of joy and thankfulness that will make this world a better one. And so God's generous gifts of grace and love are given to disciples to receive and then to pass on. Each believer, each disciple is a link in a never-ending chain of gratitude and generosity, driving out the gloom of despair as each link is added on, as each act is accomplished, as each gift is given. 
however small. Now, sadly, most people do not pass on what God has given. They receive and they sit on it. They hoard it. They store it away. But God's gifts are only powerful in this world when they are shared and given away. That's how they multiply. That's how the kingdom comes. Most people think of God as a source of gifts, not as an invitation to a new way of giving and receiving, of sharing. Jesus once healed ten men who were stricken with leprosy, a terrible, isolating, and painful skin disease. Ten lives he changed forever given a tremendous gift. Only one came back to thank Jesus. I wonder how that one man's life was lived differently from the other nine. How did his gratitude sink into his relationships and interactions from that moment on in ways that the other nine missed out on? It's another one of those places where I just wish we could know what happened next. Gratitude changes things. It's not an additional luxury, an add-on to a checklist of things that we've accomplished or received. Gratitude is the underlying attitude behind all Christ-like action. It multiplies the blessings of God so that more lives are touched and transformed. When I feel like I have to force myself to be thankful, I hope that I remember That gratitude is my greatest weapon against despair and is is the greatest weapon in accomplishing God's will in this world. So may we enter this Thanksgiving week and into our lives beyond filled with gratitude, the power of God to drive out the darkness. It all begins with just Thanks. Just thanks. Just repeat it. Just thanks. Now thank we all our God.
We are called to be a thankful people. May our thanks drive us on to give and to live so that all the earth will one day be as thankful too. To this we are called. Go and love.